In the spring of 2020, a lot of schools closed due to concerns about the spread of COVID-19. Many continue the semester using an online instruction model. To help faculty make the transition, most schools ran workshops on using the school's online learning platform. So the natural question faculty asked was, after the workshop, now what? The problem is that most online learning platforms are not very good for math. The whiteboards are optimized for text, so we can write a question, but drawing is hard, equations are worse, and no one gets your jokes. We'll take a look at some ways to supplement the online learning platform and make it more effective in teaching math. So in order to do this, you'll need the following hardware, a computer with internet connectivity, a microphone, and a phone that can take pictures and upload them to your computer. Now, if you have anything other than these antiques, you probably have these devices all in one on your laptop. But I do recommend getting a separate microphone so that you don't pick up environmental noises. Now, for beginners, I recommend Screencast-O-Matic, which is available in a free version, and the price is that it'll put a watermark on anything you produce, and GeoGebra, which is open source and free. So to get started, first, write out your lecture notes. Well, actually, first, write out what you're going to put on the board. It's helpful to write your notes in landscape layout. That's because computer screens and chalkboards are wider than they are tall. Now, the 10-second lesson in videography is the camera catches both less and more than the human eye. And what this means is that something that looked good to you might not look as good when you take the picture. So here, it's actually pretty hard to read the writing. So let's rewrite this, and this time we'll use a Sharpie to make the lettering a lot clearer. Next, take a sequence of pictures showing the reveal. Think about this as showing the individual steps in any problem that you're going to demonstrate. So here we're using a high-tech piece of paper to cover up the portions we're not going to reveal yet. So be careful not to catch other objects in your picture. Also, don't worry too much about getting the picture centered. Now, if you're going to do a live lecture remotely, you can just page through these separate pictures. But if you want to record it, now you can do a slideshow of your lecture. One quick note, I started with Screencast-O-Matic, but I've since moved on to Active Presenter, which is a more powerful presentation software that also has a free version available. With the free version of Screencast-O-Matic, you can do 15-minute voiceover narrations. Now this time limit is actually very useful, since a full lecture should be broken up into 5-10 to 10 minute segments. Most studies show that, beyond this, people don't watch or don't pay attention. So let's take a look at the product rule. Suppose I have a function... So remember I said don't worry about centering the pictures, and that's because we'll be able to take care of that by centering our capture well, let's screen. let's take a guess. Maybe the derivative... Now we graph a lot in mathematics, and so it's helpful to use GeoGebra to graph. And you can do this in pretty much the same way that you would do this on the board. And it's helpful to point out that GeoGebra also supports LaTeX formatting. Once you've finished your video lecture, you can upload it to YouTube. And there are three privacy settings worth noting. First, you can set the video to private, and if you do this, you will need to enter the email addresses of all the authorized viewers. The other possibility is to set your video to unlisted. Now, this means it won't show up on YouTube searches, but you will need to send a link to anyone who should see the video. And finally, you can also set it to public, and anyone on the internet can see it. Again, you'll still need to send a link to anyone who should see the video to remind them that the video exists.